Hey students, Mr. Mechnick, I'd like to just take a few minutes to show you how to do a box and whisker graph for our Stomata Density Lab. Uh, these graphs are really nice and handy when it comes to comparing different data sets, and it really allows us to look at how data compares to one another. So what, what you end up with when you do a box and whisker graph is a box, and the whiskers basically allow us to see the variability or the range in our data. So if there's outliers, we can easily see those outliers and how they fall. So this is a, an example of what a box and whisker would look like. So it's a, it's a simple way to compare two data sets and to look at how close the data is organized or how spread or skewed the data is based upon maybe experimental errors or observations that were made. So in terms of some of the terminology that you should be familiar with, if you're not familiar with these, the box is the box. The whisker is the tail that comes off the box. The whisker basically tells us a little bit about the range of our data. So one of the things that you're going to be asked to do is figure out what the lower quartile is, the upper quartile, what a minimum value and a maximum value are for a given data set. So all of that information can be pulled off of a Box, box and whisker graph. So for instance, the first quartile represents the bottom 25% of the data. The next 25% of the data is represented in this section right here. So this is the lower limit of that first quartile. Uh, here's our second quartile. So that's the light green colored box. And then our third quartile begins right here. So this particular graph compares test scores of students in two different classes and it gives us at least some understanding of where students might be performing better, um, what the average is, and how that average compares to the rest of the group. So how do we go about doing this for our data that we've collected for the Stomata Lab? It's pretty simple. Uh, first thing, get all the data collected from all the students. And once we once we have this, I'm going to make another chart over here that will allow us to compare uh, the data sets. So the first thing I did is I set up column headings for the minimum values the first quartile, the third quartile, the maximum value, and a medium. So to get the minimum value of this data set, you, don't, you could look through it and, and just find which one's the, the smallest, but the easiest way to do this is set up a calculation in Google Sheets so you can tell it the minimum value of the range of B2 through B18. So what it does, it searches that data set and plugs it right into our table. And I could do this for the deciduous leaf. And then my quartile, I can also figure out by letting Google Sheets use a function, which is the equal quartile. I specify the range, and then I say comma 1, which tells me it wants the first quartile. So it's going to tell me where the cutoff would be for 25% of our data. This is a relatively small data set, but the first quartile is 16,000 stomata per square centimeter for the tropical leaf data set. The third quartile then is again using a similar function equals quartile tell the range and then we want to know the third quartile so that is 18,000. So the third quartile again tells us the upper limit of 75 percent of our data. So 75 percent of our data falls in that third quartile. And then our maximum value is going to be our whisker plot on the top end of the graph. So that's 1900 using the formula equals max, specifying the range, and that will allow us to get that information plotted in the, in the box and whisker. I don't have the median on here, so again, this is median parentheses, and then I can specify the range, which is B2 through B18, close that parentheses up, and now I have the median value for my tropical leaf, and I can get the median value for my deciduous leaf as well, simply by changing that range to B2 through B19. So now my median value, I'm sorry, that should be a C2 through C19 because otherwise we have the same number for our tropical leaf. So <clears throat> there's my median value for our deciduous leaf. Now, so how do I make the graph? What I would, what you need to do is highlight this section of your graph. Don't include the median value. That'll display on your graph once you make it. And then I need to go up into insert chart. So insert chart's gonna have this window pop up. 
I do not want a bar graph, so I have to change the chart type. And if you scroll down in Google, it will give you some other options. And the option that best fits the box and whisker is called a candlestick chart. So if I click on candlestick chart, it will automatically make my box and whisker. And there it is. So all I would need to do is add my chart title. So comparing... So there's my title, and then I would also make sure that I add my horizontal axes. So my horizontal axis is the plant type, and my vertical axis is going to be my stomata density with the units of number of stoma per square centimeter. And I can close that up and now it's labeled and basically I have my graph finished. So when you are asked to look at your first quartile, it's this level, this value right here. The third quartile is this line right up here. Um, it gives us the spread between the first and third quartile. That's called the interquartile range. So you will need to know that for this lab. So looking at our tropical and deciduous leaves, we can see there's some major differences between the two density values just by comparing them side to side. So I hope, hopefully this helps you making your box and whisker plot. I'm out.